Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're on board the Essex-class aircraft carrier USS Yorktown at Patriots Point in Charleston, South Carolina. One of my favorite features of the Essex-class aircraft carriers are these big hangar doors. There's two of them that go across the sides of the ship, dividing the hangar into three separate sections. This way, if the ship takes damage, it can be narrowed to one section of the ship and you can potentially still do flight operations in the other sections. This is very important given that Essex-class aircraft carriers uh, have very little armor plating on the hangars. Unlike traditional British and Japanese aircraft carriers, and uh, there basically weren't any other countries building aircraft carriers during World War II, that uh, unlike them, American carriers had the armored deck at the hangar deck level, and the superstructure above that is relatively unarmored. You can find out more about this in the video we shot on Lexington a couple months ago, linked in the description below. Lexington is a sister ship of Yorktown. Uh, so, basically, the hangar deck is an unarmored box with a lot of open space. You can see these open doors all around the hangar, which are great in the South Pacific when you need to ventilate the space. Uh, these aircraft might be warming up their engines down here. You're doing refueling operations. You don't want all of that uh, fuel, exhaust, smoke, and heat uh, trapped in this space with uh, all the bombs that you're loading on planes and other stuff and, and the crew. Uh, so having these open doors is great, uh, but it means that there's effectively no protection here. During World War II, that stopped to be an issue, and the concept of armor uh, became less and less important. Whereas Battleship New Jersey has up to 17.3 inches of armor, uh, I can't think of a single place on an Essex-class aircraft carrier that has more than four inches of armor plate. Uh, and uh, that continues to the modern day. Enterprise had an eight-inch armored belt, but that was aluminum, so it was only as effective as four inches. And then the Nimitz class carriers went back to a four inch armored belt and that's pretty much it. They're, they've got splinter protection at best, uh, which makes sense because there's always something that can penetrate your armor. Why waste weight, space and money on that? So uh, American carriers focused on mitigating the damage that was done. If they're hit, they're gonna take damage. But how do you limit that and manage to get the ship back in the fight? Uh, one way was with a wooden flight deck that you could real easily, somebody blows a hole in it, gets the boards out and lay some more wood. My great uncle was a carpenter's mate on the uh, Essex-class aircraft carriers Wasp and Franklin. So th there's use for guys like that even in a modern steel ship. Another thing is having doors like this that allow you to seal off part of it so a fire here is contained. Uh, and the final way is with that expert American damage control. Every sailor is a firefighter first and uh, can respond to an emergency. So what are some of these flammable things that aircraft carriers are covered with? Shoot, just about everything. Here's an ammunition hoist for some of the anti-aircraft guns. Uh, there's a refueling station over there and a bomb elevator in the back corner. And then of course, you've got up to a hundred of these guys sitting around. Some of them are up on the flight deck, some of them are down here. They're partially fueled and loaded when, when you're getting ready for combat operations, so that's a problem. But also, they're made out of aluminum. Aluminum burns at a much lower temperature than steel, so a hot fire in a uh, carrier hangar deck could start catching the aircraft on fire. Now, if you've done everything right and all of your active aircraft have been launched, that's gonna mitigate some of that problem. However, American carriers could hang aircraft from the overhead, and uh, so these are not ready for immediate use, but they can be taken down and prepared for use later on to replace damaged aircraft. Uh, and they would have had what are called hangar queens, which are aircraft of the same type that you're operating, but uh, maybe they received damage in combat or maybe uh, they're just hard-use aircraft, and they just live on the hangars now, and they're the ones that you're going to uh, strip parts off of to keep your other aircraft operating. Uh, so, 
Maybe this Wildcat is significantly older than the other World War II aircraft around. Maybe this is Yorktown's Hangar Queen that they're taking parts off of. A lot of this stuff is interchangeable with the Hellcats that would have made up about two of the squadrons, probably 36 aircraft that operated off of Yorktown during World War II. So this thing sitting around, just by nature of being made out of aluminum, can catch fire and then is very difficult to put out. So we've talked about aluminum on a couple of occasions now, Enterprise's armored belt, aircraft, metal. Uh, nowadays, the Navy builds entire ships out of aluminum. Check out this video below about the USS Savannah, a modern independence class littoral combat ship that we got to board, uh, which is made entirely out of aluminum, and look at some of the stuff they have to do to mitigate that problem. This isn't the first time the Navy has tried this. In some of the Cold War era destroyers and cruisers had steel hulls and aluminum superstructures. As they had to add taller and taller superstructures with more and more electronics, they tried to save top weight by using the uh, much lighter metal. There are some incidents like the 1975 one in which the aircraft carrier Kennedy rammed the cruiser Belknap, which caused the entire superstructure basically to burn to the main deck. The steel hull was fine, but everything above that was destroyed. Uh, and so then the Navy stops using aluminum for a couple of decades, and now with the littoral combat ships, they've come back to that. Uh, but there's, there's more about that in the video in the description below, uh, where we talk about some of the things that the Navy does to mitigate that risk, and some of the advantages of an aluminum hauled ship. So, what do you think is the best defensive feature of an Essex-class aircraft carrier? Let me know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support, and if you'd like to support the ongoing restoration of ships, vehicles, and aircraft like these, there's a link in the description below for you to donate to Patriot's Point to help support their museum and their large collection. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.